Margaret Millet, thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, currently, you are head of global resilience at Uber. Uh, where you came down to uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, you were with eBay at that time. Uh, you were a participant in our first ever conference, which was the first Middle East Summit. This is the 10th Middle East Summit. And that was pre-pandemic. So that's probably about 13 years ago, roughly. Yes. Uh, you've been with MetLife. Uh, before that, you've been with IBM, State Street. So thanks so much. Uh, we'll jump straight into it. The questions that we have in this uh, conversation today are not looking at your experience with Uber, uh, but your general uh, reflections on the profession, your learnings, your thoughts, uh, and particularly anything that you can suggest with the audience uh, that we can learn from, uh, get some insights from, and hopefully all become better professionals in our own right. Uh, <clears throat> So thanks so much. With that, I'll probably jump into the first question. Um, what makes a good global resilience professional, uh, a global head, particularly, uh, Margaret? And I'm asking that question because many people who will be watching you are probably coordinators or BCM heads in their organizations. Um, the Middle East has quite a few organizations that are going global or have gone global. Saudi Aramco is probably the biggest oil company in the world. We've got Adnoc, easily one of the largest. We've got SABIC. Uh, many of these countries have operations in different uh, geographies across the world. Uh, so what can you share in terms of what it takes to be a good global head of resilience uh, on either a large scale or a small scale? Thank you, Dharaj. Before I answer that question, I want to say thank you for inviting me. When you kicked off talking to me this morning, it was hard to believe that you said it was 13 years ago, but I think your timing is right. And uh, I do wish I were with everyone in the UAE attending in person, but hopefully that'll become a reality uh, next year or in 2025. So um, I think there are many aspects that one needs to consider to move into a global head of resiliency. One is starting to understand cultural differences. Uh, the way you operate, say, in the United States versus Latin America versus EMEA versus Asia do have nuances. So start to understand what those are. Many organizations may offer uh, user groups within the company if you work for a large organization. So learn about how things are done at your company if you work with folks in different parts of the world find out on like today for example when Daraj and I are talking it's it's March 8th and it's International Women's Day find out what's happening so you can learn how things are done differently across the globe and find out if your organization has like a cultural class I know a few companies I've worked that they have had classes on how to conduct business in other parts of the world one thing that I strongly stress when I'm working with my teams and helping develop future leaders is to remember to talk slowly or slower when you're talking with folks in other parts of the world. Um, I always remember I was uh, living overseas. I lived in Dublin, Ireland for two years from 2006 to 2008. And I was attending a, a big meeting in London with my colleagues across EMEA. And there was a gentleman there from France and he, in my mind, spoke perfect English. And he said, when we have these meetings, I'm only picking up about 70% of what's being said because he said, I'm pausing to translate some of these things from French into English. And when I do that, I then miss what was covered while I am translating. So I've always kept that in my mind, even though somebody might speak fluent English because I know I can't speak hardly anything in another language except please and thank you. <laughs> um, I think the other thing that you need to remember is one size does not fit all when you are doing business continuity planning globally. Um, sometimes you do have to adjust and remember to be agile because sometimes what you have in place for one part of the world needs to be tweaked to make it succinct and understandable in another part of the world. And remember that what you put in place today may not be appropriate tomorrow or a year from today. So I, I, I think those are some of the big things, as well as working on soft skills, Daraj. Um, everybody always thinks, hey, I need to know business continuity management. Therefore, I can go for a, a global head just based on my CV. I think you need to stop and look about the company that you're at, what your peers are doing, and what others who have gotten promoted have had on their CVs or what they've done at the organization. 
it's important to get involved at the company that you work at so that you start to know more people and therefore your name becomes affiliated with doing things, not only just doing business continuity, but maybe being a mentor at the company or joining a mentor program so that you get exposure to other leaders. Learning new things, ask how you can learn from your manager or what new steps you need to take in order to get to the next level with your career. Take on new tasks. For example, if you've never put together a budget, ask how to get involved with the planning process for the next fiscal year so that you can learn how to put together a budget. Public speaking is something that we do within business continuity management. So if you feel you're not comfortable in that, ask if there's a public speaking class that you can take at your company or externally so that you can feel better and having a voice, not only in talking about business continuity management, but getting your voice heard by management at your company. Um, I, I never micromanage my teams, but I do say there's one thing that's very powerful. If you're out trying to do something and you're not getting the response you need, um, include me in and on an email because that gentle reminder of, hey, Diraj, looking forward to receiving your response today. Thanks, Margaret, really can then start to open up doors to get the, the emails flowing in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I think another thing, Diraj, is don't use acronyms. Our, our profession, like many others, has a whole list of acronyms. And so, uh, you know, BIA might mean something to somebody else. So therefore, write out business impact analysis for the first time right. and then put BIA so that somebody's not thinking it's, for example, the Bureau of Internal Affairs or <laughs> some other <laughs> acronym that they're familiar with, because you're going to have them sitting there scratching their head thinking, What's, what are they talking about that for? <laughs> exactly. Fair point. Uh, MTPD, RTO, MAO, yes. all those, MBCO, <laughs> all those vague ones. So. <laughs> right. That brings me to, in fact, the next point about technology. Um, how has cloud changed things? And uh, in terms of what cloud is available, do you have any recommendations yeah. to people? Because it can almost blindsight you and it can also almost maybe give you a false sense of security. So it's yes. good and bad both. Uh, yes. How do you, what do you suggest should be done from a cloud perspective? Um, you know, I look at cloud as just another form of outsourcing your IT to another company. And um, I can't remember exactly when, but I know it was within the last, say, 18 to 24 months. Um, I think it was Amazon Web Servers had some big outages. Sorry, I don't mean to call out a particular company, but I think it was them. And if I got the wrong company, I apologize to them. Um, but, you know, I think it's like anything, something can go wrong and therefore you have to wait for them to go restore their services. Some of this also still gets back down to the due diligence that you need to be doing when you prick your provider, whether it be a cloud provider or just even, you know, who's going to provide uh, office supplies to you. If they're critical on these things, you need to do your due diligence on doing the vendor questionnaire to look at their business continuity, crisis management, disaster recovery and making sure that you understand what are the protocols that you have in place between your company and the vendor that's providing cloud services and making sure that you understand when they're gonna be doing any kind of testing so that you can maybe monitor your own systems to make sure that nothing's gone wrong. Ask maybe to participate in a, one of their exercises or tests, which is also a little harder to do, but if you do it, want to do it, do it at the time of your contract. And also find out what the service level agreement is between your company and that company so that when something does unfold, what's the time frame that you're going to get notified and also make sure that they understand who to contact at your company and you know who to contact at that company. And I think that's something that should be reviewed every quarter, knowing that people come and go or companies are reworked. Yeah, absolutely. My, my, my sense is many people don't. It's almost, uh, oh, they are good. Uh, over there we're good it's taken care of <laughs> exactly, exactly. out of sight out of mind um but you know i look at it it's it's just like any other company and i think the other thing that we need to be mindful of is you know there are a lot more providers out there today there are a lot more mergers and acquisitions taking place so you've got to also stay on top of what's happening with those companies that you're dealing with um you heard me mention sunguard earlier if, I never would have thought in my career SunGuard would have gone out of business, but they did. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You just don't know. I do remember one thing, Diraj, that was really interesting in COVID. You know, when you do a business impact analysis or you're looking at, you know, the critical areas that need to get back up and running, uh, you know, everyone takes for granted the mailroom. But the mailroom became extremely critical during COVID-19 because 
Things were still being shipped to companies, but there was nobody there to go process the mail. And depending on what you're getting, AKA checks or requests to do something critical, you needed to realize, that's when I realized the mail room was really important and that the staff that maybe did the scanning needed to be in. So there are always gonna be the need for taking a look at these things and starting to figure that out. But what also has changed within our field is the cybersecurity landscape. Um, you know, I'm going to say this for every organization out there, it, it's you're probably being in, you know, something's going on even today that's maybe minor uh, that you just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think every organization is very susceptible to having a cybersecurity event that can impact their data in some regard. And so how do you deal with that? So I think it's also now taking a look at the convergence between, I'll say, incident management for what, for daily application issues, your cybersecurity team, as well as your disaster recovery team that takes care of your application exercises and testing for those applications. Because a lot of organizations rely on many applications, so you need that dedicated team. And then business continuity, because if something happens, how are you going to address those calls coming in from clients or uh, customers um, that use your company's products and or services to tell them what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. And also just making sure you have those real-time comms available that you've already have written, have approved by legal so that you can start and say, hey, something's happened. Let's start and get the communications flowing and then adapt for what it is for the actual event that's taking place. Exactly. Fair. You were with IBM, so in, in that sense, you've been working for a technology provider directly. Two questions, maybe one, how does that improve your ability to be a BCM head? And secondly, uh, being on the other side, perhaps, um, how do you do, what do you do to collaborate and get the best out of your IT partners? So I've worked for financial companies, but then my past few employers like IBM, eBay and, and Uber, um, they are technology companies, um, or that's what they call them at. You may look at Uber as a, as a transportation company, but they officially call themselves a technology company. <laughs> I have to say, whether you're truly in business continuity, crisis management, disaster recovery, whatever, you have to know technology in some regard, because today we all rely on technology. The day and age of going back and doing something with paper and pen is extremely hard. Um, you know, we all live and die by these devices and we run companies. There are a lot of more mobile apps. So therefore, you need to understand technology. I'm not saying you need to be the one that needs to go back and restore the application, but you, you need to get familiar with some of the technology lingo so that when you go have discussions with them, you can follow it. I'm not so I I, I used to be, you know, very in depth. Um, and as I progressed in my career, I say I've gone from you know, zero, ground zero to the 30,000 foot level because I can talk the technology, I can carry on enough conversations to go talk to the technology people. So that's where I tell people, if you're feeling like you're a little weak in that area, go to technology sessions when you go to a business continuity conference. There are plenty of webinars out there, find out what you can do, or go ask for uh, an information session with your technology teams at your companies and ask them to do an overview with you so you can help understand more about how the technology is at your organization and have them help educate you. Because you know, at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that if you say uh, apples, they understand apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Yeah. And I think that's the best way for you to help improve it. Um, or also find out if there is some local certification class that might be no, nearby where you live that you could maybe take. Thanks. And that brings me probably to the last question, uh, which is about, I would say, maybe uh, the posi positioning of business continuity. Um, I think maybe one of the byproducts of pandemic for our profession was it was an organizational and leadership problem. It wasn't just a business continuity or resilience team problem. So clearly it was on the, on, in, in the boardroom and on the agenda. And as you said, yeah. uh, one has to make sure it doesn't fall off very much. Um, question to you would be as a global head, um, how do you, what do you need to do to relate with leadership in different geographies? And if yes, then how do you manage to do that? Keep it simple. Uh, that's my first recommendation. And also remember their time is very valuable. So think about succinct slides that you wanna share with them 
And again, you want to keep it to three to five slides. You may need to put some additional information in the appendix. Um, but I think that it's important to get out there and realize that they need to understand what it is because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm the only, I'm not, I'm not the SME on human resources. I'm just the person that's here with my team to provide the tools, templates, and methodology on business continuity management. That's what I'm a SME and a subject matter expert. So at the end of the day, you still need to have the ownership and the accountability of making sure that your plans are there, that they've been exercised, and that you also understand what's the risk of regulatory, legal, customer, Again, I can't tell you if something happens in Brazil, what the impact's going to yeah. be. I need you to help me understand that. And we need to get ahead of the curve. And I need you, the person in that country, to tell me, oh, by the way, there might be a new rule and reg coming in 2025 that we need to get ready for. Because I want this to be a slow, delightful journey, not a rush, quick, oh, my God, we got to go live next month with it type thing. So it's helping them to understand the partnership, the collaboration, and the importance of it. Makes sense. I think, and I think particularly, as you said, when you reach out, they will give you the time, but keep it short, simple, respect yeah. the time. And, and maybe in that brief time, uh, just get your message across. So, and also I think the other thing to Raj that doesn't happen enough is like, we have a lot of points of contact in organizations who help support a business continuity management program. It falls under that category of miscellaneous duties. Um, but they also need to be champions of telling their manager and their management up chain that, you know, they're working with the business continuity team because sometimes what I have found also is I could be meeting with you about something in the UAE and I, and they'll be like, well, who are you working with? And and I also then just have to keep my good game face going of like, well, clearly then that my POC has not been talking about that with their leadership, because this should be part of, you know, one on ones that are taking place with those folks as they talk to their management. And that should be going up the management chain so that but I have a meeting with you as the head of the UAE, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know who some of my POCs are. It should be no surprise, but oftentimes it is. Yeah, makes sense. Fair enough. Um, thanks uh, so much, Margaret. That's all I had on my uh, list. Really appreciate. I hope people who see this get some learning, some thoughts, some inspiration, and and uh, some of them commit to themselves that they will try to get to regional and global jobs. That will be nice. So thanks so much for your time and your inputs, and you have a good day. Thank you very much, Daraj. I really appreciate you extending an invitation to me. I hope the conference is a huge success. My best wishes to everyone who's attending. And don't forget to put funding in your budget to attend in person in 2024. Um, and look me up on LinkedIn if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. Will do. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.